And welcome to another edition of Angela's Homeschool. Let's all take our seats and learn some different ways to teach our students about the stock market. Now, as a homeschool mother, it's up to me to teach them how to wisely invest their monies, real or otherwise. And there's a number of different sites on the internet, but I do want to explain a few things. Um, you know, I like Charles Schwab quite a bit. And you can start a a account for children that are 18 and under. Um, I think this is a wise thing to do. It's called a custodial account for children that are under the age of 18. You're responsible for overseeing the account. Um, you know, kids today can buy and sell stocks online in the same way that adults can. They can use E-Trade, Charles Schwab Online, which I just mentioned. I like Charles Schwab. And there's a lot of other companies that offer online trading. So the big thing is that if you have a child that's under the age of 18 that you're homeschooling, or otherwise if you are just have your regular child in public or private school, the account must be set up as a custodial account as I said before and unlike regular accounts custodial accounts generally can't be opened online you'll have to request an account form which you can do online and then submit it by mail and as always you can go down to your local agent and set one up that way just go down to your broker rather I said agent anyway um, now custodial accounts are supposed to be managed by the custodian that's you, the parent. You have to take some responsibility here. Be a homeschool parent or otherwise. Customer agreements state that the only an account holder of legal age will trade online. As a practical matter, however, once the online account is in place, there's no real mechanism to prevent the children from doing their own trading. So I suggest that you really supervise this and use this as a learning situation. For when they get older how to invest wisely if they invest wisely from a young age they can retire at 40 it can be done I wish I had known this when I was 18 or 16 and I remember picking out some stocks but I really didn't pay attention to it because there wasn't that much of an emphasis emphasis placed on this account and I, I think it would have served me well to learn more so I'm making certain that my children learn as well so a broker talking to an investor won't take an order from a minor, but the computer doesn't know the age of the person who's inputting the information. You know, you really have to talk to your broker to get the orders done. But um, I don't know if the industry is going to place any controls in place to prevent direct trading by minors or maybe even by hackers. I mean, weird things can happen. I think it's really good if you just take the child down with you to your broker and make your selections that way. And it's good to have interactions between the broker and the child to learn the proper terminology and the respect for money. I think some children do not have the respect for money that the that the, we did when we were younger. I guess it's, I'm one of those people like, oh, it's not like the old days. And you know what? It's not. So we really need to take a more proactive approach in teaching our children how to hold monies, how to talk to a broker, what are the terms and conditions. You know, so many different parts of the stock market that the regular person does not know. Like, for example, the difference between preferred and common stock or reserve stock. What are, or what are the changes that happen between the three stocks? What does that mean? You know, basically, I tell my kids common stock are the people who are paid less and last. And sometimes not all when a company is bankrupt and they're paying out dividends, the what they're paying for the worth of the stock. Reserve stock are, are the people who get paid first, the dividends. And then preferred the most common, you know, it's the man in the middle. So that's how I've explained it to my then eight-year-old and she seemed to understand that a great deal so but going back to the controls what happens if your 
12-year-old puts an order to buy 10,000 shares of stock in his custodial account for $1 million, then the price of the stock tumbles to half of what it was when the order was executed. Who's left holding the bag? Well, since without industry controls in place to prevent online trading by minors, it's up to you as the parent to monitor your child's activities. I cannot stress this enough that, that you really need to monitor it. But for those children that want to be a baller, this is a great way to start. It's legal. It's creative. They had to think. They had to project. They had to analyze the company, where they've been, where they might be going. And people that have surveyed that company and and their um, summaries of the, co the company. It's a really good situation. They could even start a blog on how they chose their stocks, what it meant for them, and how they think they're helping different parts of the world with certain companies that they invested in. I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, I don't often see articles where, you know, 15 year olds made millions by trading online, but perhaps your child can be one of the next articles that can be written out there. And I think it's newsworthy. When children do well, they should be celebrated. And your job is to provide necessary controls on what's otherwise a very easy investing process. There's a couple strategies you can use to avoid the online tra trading catastrophes like what I mentioned before. You need to discuss all proposed trades that your child wants to take. If your child was going to go out and buy a car, you would definitely talk about the different make models. What type of car? Do you need four-wheel drive? It's no different with a stock. You have to look at all the... the um, corners of the square I guess is a good way to say it you have to look at all corners of the square sometimes they're not always the same and if you're dealing directly for a broker you know how to handle oneself when going in there uh, set up some procedures in your home for making trades if you insist that you can only submit orders to buy or sell online then you need to make your your rules your regulations Perhaps you want to set a time each evening or three times a, a week where you sit down with your child in front of the computer to make any trades. I think that's the most safe option to be right there, you know, and have the child research the companies they want to invest in. It's really good. It helps um, with logic and a lot of different things. This, these are real life situations. And once you have an account in place, a child can decide what to buy or sell. There's no broker making specific investment suggestions. Though, again, I highly recommend that you go speak to a broker and let your child ask those questions of, what should I buy? You know, those type of things. Or, how do I buy? What type of stock do I purchase? So, um, there's something called the rewards of stock market investment. You can look that up online. Really know what you're buying and look at it in a long-term view. Too often our children are hedonistic. You know, they're very much into pleasure seeking. Their children, their, their brain's not fully developed. So we really need to look at them and show them how to do a long-term investment. Do they choose stock options or mutual funds? You know, what are the difference between the two? You have a lot of different ways you can go here. Now there is this uh, thing called the stock market game. The stock market game was designed by Mr. Kumar, K-U-M-A-R, Shalise Kumar. Shalise is spelled S-H-A-I-L-E-S-H, -E -S Kumar. And this, um, the stock market game is a simulation. It allows students a valuable and fun opportunity to learn about the process of making good investments and begins a good foundation for sound money management. We want to have responsible citizens. We want them to have a full life. And I think a full life starts with a good money base. And they can learn to do this themselves. 
And not only does this program, this game, it's designed not only to be used in mathematics and economics, but it gives valuable lessons in social studies, language arts, technology, and even science classes. It helps students expand their knowledge and gain new skills in investing, saving, communication, cooperation, research, and decision making. Now, I must admit, I, I just read that last paragraph from the stock market game. And if you like what I said there, go ahead and go to it and uh, learn a little bit more. Uh, there's personal finance exams that are online with this. And then they learn the rules of the language of saving and investing money. And again, like I said before, when uh, a lot of people don't know the difference between common, preferred, and reserve stock. That's not common knowledge. It should be. At one time, it was much more popular to know these terms. So this may be a way that you can educate yourself as you're educating your child. So there's... Um, there's two popular stock market games for high school students across America. They're called the stock market game, which I, I just explained, and the national stock market simulation. These games are used are played using virtual money as each class needs to make a simulated sales and purchases of stocks plus mutual funds, as I mentioned before, and bonds. There's a specific amount of time to complete the classroom portfolio. And you can do this in a homeschool setting or a public school setting. You can do either or. The stock market game exposes students within smaller budgets to increase educational standards. So I think this is a, a great way to learn about the stock market. Um, there's a, something called Play the Market. That's a four-week lesson plan. I have some things uh, bookmarked here. Play the Market's one of it. It's a four-week lesson plan for middle school students to learn how the stock market works. Very important. Again, as I said before, the stock market game, I cannot approve of that any more than I do at this time. That includes five lesson plans in conducting a modified stock market game. There's the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's an integrated math history lesson that gives an emphasis on this stock market crash. You can get created with this. You can do a whole unit study on the stock market, the history, starting with the crash, the deregulation. You know, what went wrong? What's going wrong now? And what's going right now? There are some things that are going right. The capital market. That's another link. It's called the Capital Market, and it's an online quiz about the capital market. That's pretty generic, right? Um, there's investing in the stock market. There's a lesson plan for students to learn the three major U.S. stock markets by using imaginary stock. stock. Who owns McDonald's? This is a creative lesson plan. It's definitely creative. To introduce students on the concept of being owners of a business through purchasing stock. Yes, you too can own McDonald's if you can buy enough stock. Um, I used to play a game. I'm trying to think of the name of it. And it was built on stock. And, oh, it was so good. Oh, I could just kick myself right now. I cannot remember the, the name of it. But the principles still hold to. Maybe I'll remember the the name of it at the end of this session. Um, there's another... If you Google understanding portfolios, now this is a stock market game quiz to understand how well the students understood the lesson about the stock market. Oh, goodness. There's so many different links here. Uh, this one's a good. It's a flash game where students can invest on imaginary stocks. It's called, Can You Be the Next Market Guru? And then here's one. It's a FET. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the Fed, but it's Fed Chairman Game. It's an online game where students can take, have the chance to take charge of a simulated economy. Now that puts them in, in a position of ownership and responsibility. I think these are good character traits to learn. Again, it's called the Fed Chairman Game. And then after that, we had the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Exchange. It's a game for kids where they can have the option to select different companies and buy shares. So all these different links that I discussed have the common theme of learning how to invest. Um, at the mint.org. Again, the mint.org.